My name is Don Hall and in this video we're going to talk a little bit about kilns. Uh, what are the basics of kilns? You've probably heard of reduction and oxidation kilns or uh, updraft or downdraft. We're going to show you a little bit about how that works and also uh, a little bit about kilns, how they've changed and developed over time. The most common kiln that people use are electric kilns like this one over here. I use it all the time. It works great. Now, gas kilns are a little different. They require fuel and to make fire. And when you're dealing with fire, you have to know that fire requires three basic elements. It requires uh, oxygen and it requires fuel and it requires heat. And because of that, it gives you the opportunity to adjust the amount of fuel, the amount of oxygen you get. Now, when we talk about a reduction kiln, that means they're going to reduce the amount of oxygen in the kiln. Now, a lack of oxygen uh, makes the fire burn a lot less hot. And so, when it's burning, the fire literally looks for oxygen and it takes the oxygen, any oxygen that's available to keep the fire going. And they, it does that by taking oxygen out of your work, out of your glaze or out of your uh, clay body, which changes its color. Now, in this slide, you can see three cups. They are fired in a reduction atmosphere in the same kiln to the same temperature on different days using the same exact clay body, the same exact glaze. But notice that the one on the left is, is white. That is in a more oxidation uh, environment where there was, there was plenty of oxygen in the kiln. The middle one, it the oxygen had been reduced a little bit and it turns a little bit grayer. And the third one, which is a dark, very dark gray, almost black, that firing was a severe reduction firing where the oxygen was turned way back, the kiln was turned on, the gas was turned on full blast, and there was black smoke coming out of the top of the kiln. So. It's an advantage to being able to adjust that. For beginners, it takes a little while to learn what your kiln needs to do. So you need, if you get, if you get a, a gas burning kiln, you're gonna have to play with it a little bit to figure out which is best for you. In this picture, it shows what an updraft kiln looks like, how it works. An updraft kiln, basically, fire, the heat enters the kiln from the the bottom and it travels up around the work and exits through the top. This is a very common kiln. I'm going to show you several examples of this and uh, it works quite well without a whole lot of uh, adjustment needed. The other kind of kiln is like this one which is a drown draft kiln and it's slightly different. The fire enters somewhere on the side or, the, or near the floor of the kiln, travels upward to the top of the kiln, and then exits the kiln through the, somewhere on the bottom, the floor, and it actually needs to have a chimney. You can adjust how, it, how, how the reduction works and things on this kiln by you know, the length of your chimney. In many cases. This is a footed cup from Iraq, I'm sorry, from Iran, approximately 7,000 years old. And this one is a Anasazi uh, black and white jar, a black on white jar from about 1200. So it's about a little over thousand years old, about 1800 years old. And I don't know exactly how these people uh, fired this kiln, these 
these this pottery but I'm guessing that they fired it something like this where early kilns were simply a hole dug in the ground you put fuel around the work and pile lots of uh, sticks and burnable material on top of it and then light it and let it all burn out wait till it burns down and then you just dig your pottery out of the ashes this is the way people met, fired pottery for thousands and thousands of years it's only been very recently that people have been using electric kilns this is an updraft kiln this is the the next big advancement in kiln making was to make the fire under the pottery this is a kiln that i visited and watched some fellows firing this kiln in india and i what i want you to notice about this kiln it's round they're throwing the fuel in the bottom and on the left side they started this fire underneath with some corn stalks dried corn stalks and then they went to sticks and from there they they uh, put cow patties cow pies in the kiln and they did that for several hours they would put a cow pie in every few minutes keep it burning the kiln itself is filled all the way to the brim with pottery and then they take broken pot shards and cards and cover the top this picture is looking down inside of the kiln from the top straight down it's perfectly round and it has this spider web looking like spider looking thing which is just old uh, steel that they use this is what you're looking here is basically the floor of the kiln and they throw the cow pies and everything underneath it so the fire comes up straight up updraft and and cooks the, the the ware this is a video of a couple of fellows that are throwing sawdust into the kiln to get the final firing Amen. This is a kiln that I helped build in Nicaragua, and it's a little bit of an advancement over that round kiln with the open top. It actually is totally enclosed. We took us a couple of days to build this kiln and we were getting a little goofy at the end and we put it made it look like a little a pig a little bit but in this shot you can see at the very bottom there's two slots where the fire goes in where the fuel goes in and then there's a floor and the, which allows the heat to come up through the floor and where it'll be loaded in the front where that looks like a mouth is will be bricked up and there's a small opening in the top once again it's just a simple updraft kiln this is another one the very same uh, sort of process only it's a barrel vault and the ends get pottery gets put in the, the, the ends get bricked up and then it is fired with sticks underneath the kiln. You can see the work here that's been actually fired and, and there's no glaze on that. It's just burnished uh, slip. This is a, another advancement now. Now we're talking about a downdraft kiln. This is a kiln that a fellow named Manny Ramirez uh, developed. For, and these kilns are being, are being made all over the world to fire ceramic water filters. But, uh, the reason the way this works is like that illustration I showed you the fire comes in the bottom and travels up to the top and exits through through a slot in the floor and uh, out the chimney this is a floor of a kiln of a manny kiln before the walls and roof have been put on 
And what you're looking at here is in the bottom front, there's two, pl two places where the fire goes. And then that fire burns and it comes in the back of the kiln in those two holes in the back, travels up around and then exits through that slot in the front. The slot in the front is connected underneath the kiln by a passageway that takes the heat up to the chimney, which is the farthest thing at the top of this uh, picture, which is in fact a downdraft kiln. Works very, very good. This is what we call a doogie kiln. It's basically the same kiln that I just showed you, the Manny downdraft kiln, but uh, it has a little sprung arch. The thing that's nice about this kiln is it's smaller. And so people who don't want to have to spend a month creating all the work to fill up a giant kiln can do it in a, in a smaller way. All right, so that's a little bit about how kilns work. And I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to our channel. Thanks for viewing. And we'd love to hear any comments or show us some pictures of your own kilns. Thank you.